So let me give you one thing. So today we're going to talk about how to survive the end of the world. So let me give you the sermon in a sentence so that uh, you can fall asleep if you need to, Richard, all right? So here it is. No matter what happens, you need to carry out the assignment that God has given you, period. So we're going to look at what Jesus says and look at things to, to look for. We're going to talk about watching and guarding and being alert. But basically what Jesus was saying is here's the things that are going to happen, but that's not even what your main focus should be. That's just kind of a, a side note for you to pay attention to, to remind you to pay attention. So let me ask you this question. By the way, I have a little less time today. Rodney, you were perfect. You did a great job. Everybody said how much you did a great job. Brian, you were a little long. But uh, anyway, I just like to pick on him. I've known, I've known Brian for a long time. Yeah, yeah, Brian's the one that I should have been doing this to, but you know, he's picking on Dave, so how can I cut him short? That's just, that's just worth it. So we just cut the sermon short. It's okay. You know, people would rather hear your joke anyway, so you're welcome. Yeah, nice. So if you knew Jesus was coming back today, other than not telling that joke, what would you change? If you knew that an hour from now, you were going to be raptured, that all of a sudden we'd hear the trumpet. And by the way, we used to do this in college, and they'd say, what are you doing? i said, rapture practice. <laughs> if you knew that an hour from now, he was calling you home. Would you worry about the things you're worried about right now? Would you focus on the things you're focused on? What would change in your life? And so today as we talk about this, I want to show you, we're going to get to uh, uh, Mark chapter 13 today. And um, I would encourage you to read the chapter. There's no way I can cover everything. There's just no way. This is uh, flying over the Grand Canyon and going, isn't that pretty? Okay, that's what we're doing today. But the disciples couldn't figure out what matters in the middle of this story. Jesus is talking about his death. He's talking about what's going to happen. And the disciples could not figure it out. And yet Jesus looks at them and basically says, watch, guard, be alert, and be ready. Now, I've had times in my life, and I always try to tell you a story about times that I blew it. So let me tell you one. I got to play paintball with my brother once in my life. Now, I'd played paintball before, but we had gone to North Carolina when it had snowed that morning in the mountains, and I was with a group of other youth pastors at that time, and we got to play paintball. Now, if you don't know anything about paintball, the worst time to play paintball is when it's cold because it literally freezes the paintballs, and so it's like shooting ice at each other, and it hurts. But there was an opportunity, and you could hear it when a gun jammed. And my brother came down the hill, and he was above me, and I was behind uh, some logs. And my brother literally was just sitting there trying to hit me with a paintball and just boop, 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 boop. But what you don't know is with the kind of guns we were using, when the paintball gun jams, this thing would just go. Boop. So you'd hear boop, 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 boop. And you knew when you heard that sound, oh no, they can't shoot anymore. And that was your opportunity. So my brother was bloop, 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 trying to hit his brother. You know, I'm the older brother. I'm the smart one. So he couldn't hit me, right? Isn't that sad that I'm the smart one? That should, that should make you feel bad for my brother, who's also a pastor, by the way. So anyway, so, so he's shooting this at me, and hit, I hear his gun go bloop. So I think this is my chance. So I start running up the hill after him. I'm just pursuing. I mean, he is going to get it. And I'm trying to just get close enough that I can hit him with a paintball and get him out of the game. His team cheated. Our team was just pastors. His team added a guy who worked at the, at the range. And because I was so focused on my brother, I did not see that guy come up behind me and shoot me in my keister as I ran up the hills trying so hard to focus on my brother. And I was out. Why? Because I focused on the wrong thing and didn't pay attention. Listen. In this chapter, the disciples focused on the wrong thing. Many of you right now aren't even listening to me. You're thinking of something else. You're criticizing somebody. You're focused on some problem you have. You're focused on a worry. So tune in for a minute. There's no bacon here. And we all do this. 
We joke about me being ADD and getting distracted, but the truth is, as Christians, we are distracted all the time in a world full of distractions. So I'm going to give you several things from Jesus how to get back on track. Number one, here it is. Watch out for fearful wandering. Fear will pull you in directions you don't want to go. Fear will keep you from trusting God. Fear will make you focus on worry and, and strife. And you won't even be able to love the people around you when you walk in fear. Listen to what Jesus says. As Jesus was leaving the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what massive stones. What magnificent buildings. And by the way, this was Herod's, I mean, top, the, the biggest Best building he built was the temple. The wailing wall you know of was tiny compared to the temple. The temple was 18 feet thick, the stones. They were 12 feet high. The building was 18 stories tall. In that time, that was unheard of. And so one of the disciples says, hey, look at this. Do you see all these great buildings? He's thinking, you know, we're going to set up kingdom here, right, Jesus? Do you see all these great buildings, replied Jesus? Not one stone here will be left on another. Everyone will be thrown down. By the way, if you go there today, these huge, gigantic stones that are as big as half this room. There is not one on top of the other. They pushed every one of them. You can find ruins in every city all over the place of things that existed way, way long ago where there are some stones left on top of each other. It was a waste of time to do what they did. But seven, within 70 years after Jesus, all of those stones were pushed off the side of the hill over the wailing wall. Those stones are actually 60 feet below the wailing wall now where the valley used to be. As Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives opposite of the temple, Peter, James, John, and Andrew asked him privately, tell us when these things will happen. And what will be the sign that they're about to be fulfilled? Jesus said to them, watch out, that no one deceives you. This word for deceive here means somebody that's wandering that takes you with them. Now, most of us can remember a time in our life that we let somebody talk us into something that we didn't really want to do. And we ended up doing something dumb because we listened to somebody who was wandering and they said, hey, let's try this. And we did. And then we got in trouble or we, were, we felt bad or, or made a dumb decision, right? And that's what this is talking about. Somebody who's trying to pull you away from what really matters. Watch out for those people. Many will come after me in my name, claiming I am he, and will deceive many. When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, listen to what it says. Do not be alarmed. What does this mean? This word for alarmed, don't walk in fear. You're going to hear of this stuff, but don't be afraid of it. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. A nation will rise against nation. Kingdom against kingdom. There'll be earthquakes in various places and famines. These are the beginning of birth pains. Jesus is saying this is what's going to happen down the road, but don't focus on these false fears. Don't get focused on this false narrative that always pulls you towards Fear. Hey, I'm here. I'm going to take care of you. Don't be afraid. Wander with me. I'll take care of you. I can do it. I'm a politician. Oh, did I say that out loud? Be careful that you don't worship a politician. There's some, there's some wonderful people in politics. None of them are Jesus. So be careful that your worship doesn't become about somebody who can't save you. Jesus was warning about this ahead. It would just be a few years before Titus was standing where Herod had just built this huge, amazing temple and burning the whole place down. It takes that long for things to change. So what do we do? Proverbs 3, 5 tells us what to do. Today I choose to trust in the Lord and not my own understanding. You ever feel confused about what's going on around you? You ever feel fearful? You ever feel angry? And you think, I gotta fix this. Hey, sometimes you just have to say, God, you know what? In the middle of all this, I can't fix that, but I can trust you today. 
You know, when you go to the doctor and he gives you a report you don't like, you cannot say to him, you didn't just say that. Undo, rewind, right? He looks at you and says, you know, Eric, you're 40 pounds overweight. No, I'm not. Uh, yeah, you are. No, 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 you don't understand. I'm not. I mean, we can deny the truth, but it's still there. So what do we need to do? God, you know what? I've made some decisions that are wrong in my health. You know what, God? I've made some decisions that are wrong in the people I spend time with. Lord, I'm worried about this situation. Lord, I'm worried about my children. Lord, I'm worried about my grandchildren. Father, I'm worried about this. But instead of trying to fix it all, I'm not going to lean on my own understanding. Today, I choose to trust you. Number two, guard against distracted gullibility. Now, you need to realize over the years that there has been prophecy after prophecy after prophecy, people saying Jesus is coming back right now. Just so you know, when the Black Plague hit, just so you know, my wife, who's a doctor, tells me, you know, Eric, this is a practice plague. I'm like, what? This is awful. She's like, no, no, no. You don't understand. The Black Plague, 50% of the people that caught the Black Plague died. 75 to 200 million people died. And guess what people said? It's the end of the world as we know it. Sounds like REM. Martin Luther in 1600 said the world was going to end. John Wesley said it would be 1836. Chuck Smith from Calvary Chapel said it would be 1981. Nostradamus, 1999. He wasn't far off if they hadn't reprogrammed the computers, maybe. Remember the year 2000? I had a friend come to me and said, Listen, Eric, power's going to be out for years. You better go get a well and a pump so you can have water. I'm like, dude, the first thing that comes in after a hurricane is water. That's the last thing I'm getting. Right? And so, and so over the years, and, and most of us lived through the year 2000, right? And we remember everything's going to, you know, when 9-11 happened, that was the end of the, right? Over and over. And so what does Jesus tell us? Look at this. Brother will betray brother to death and a father his child. Children will rebel against their parents and have them put to death. That's from Micah 7, 6, by the way. Everyone will hate you because of me, but the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. When you see the abomination that causes desolation, that's just fun to say, by the way. The abomination that causes the desolation. What is he talking about? When Titus is standing in the temple. Listen, he says, when you see that, standing where it doesn't belong, let the reader understand. Let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let no one on the housetop go down and enter the house to take anything out. Why? Because 70 years after Jesus, there was a siege that took place in Jerusalem that you did not want to be in town. People resorted to cannibalism. Disease broke out. Fire, a fire that you can still see to this day. If you take a tour of Jerusalem, I was told last night, you can still see strata where this fire took place. It was so severe. What a prophecy. Wow. Jesus was just showing, hey, I know what's coming. And then a few verses later, he says, At that time, if anyone says to you, look, here is the Messiah. Look, here he is. Do not believe it. For false messiahs and false prophets will appear. And listen to this. Someone will perform signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. So, what do you do? Be on your guard. Basically, don't be gullible. Be careful what you believe. Be careful who you listen to. I have told you everything ahead of time, Jesus says, but in those days following the distress, the sun will be darkened, the moon will not give its light, the stars will fall from the sky, and heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time, people will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory, and he'll send his angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of the heavens. See, Jesus came the first time in meekness, riding the back of a donkey, and the next time he's coming in power with his angels. At that time, there's going to be more confusion, more false stories, more false news. People will be misled. There'll be fakers, some who will even be able to do miracles. And what does Jesus say? Be on your guard. Be careful of people who you'll be gullible to. You'll try to follow them instead of following me. They'll say, hey, I can save you. Follow me instead. Follow Jesus instead. Don't look for safety in people. Don't look for safety in positions. Don't look for safety in your job. Don't look for safety in those things. Look for safety in Christ. 
Colossians 3.15. Today I choose to let the peace of Christ guard my heart. Have you found yourself frustrated and irritated? Have you found yourself worried? Have you found yourself focused on all kind of things and it almost feels like a hurricane over your head? Then what do you need to do? God, through your Holy Spirit, would you fill me with your peace today? I don't want to be fearful and and wander off and follow people I don't need to follow. But Lord, I also don't want to be distracted by all the things that other people are going to tell me are important. I want to let your peace rule my heart. Number three, the most important point. If you miss everything else, get this one today. Be alert to your assignment. Can I tell you something about life? It changes like that. This week, Kristen got in our car. She was headed to work. She stopped at the first light, put the brakes on. She was sitting there for a minute, and all of a sudden, the car started rolling. The brakes on our car failed. Not only did they fail, it started accelerating. Thankfully, she figured out how to pump the brakes and was able to stop and get back home. We found out that Toyota actually has no recall on these cars, but they have a known defect in a bunch of hybrid cars that are causing this to happen, and they fix it. After this happens. So I said to the dealership, what if my wife had died doing this? But we're going to give you a rental car and we're going to take care of all the expenses. Don't worry about a thing. We'll take care of you as long as you need to. You can have the best car in the lot. Here's a RAV4. Drive that home. Are you happy now? No. I'm not. Why? Life is precious. It only takes a moment for life to change. So what do we do? Do I sit and worry about what's happening to everybody in my life? My grandchildren, my great-grandchildren, what I'm doing next, what that doctor said. Nay, nay. God, what do you want me to do now? God, who have you put in my life? Even so, when you see these things happening, you'll know that it's near, right at the door. Truly, I tell you, this generation certainly will not pass away till all these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away. Listen to this. But my words will never pass away. You realize that in heaven we'll still have God's word to us? In heaven we'll still have the words from Christ to us. Not only will he be present with us, his word will still be true. By the way, if you haven't read Psalms 1 and 39 lately, I'd encourage you. I was reading it this morning. I'd encourage you to read it to remind you of how much he cares about you. But about that day or hour, no one knows. Remember, I I mentioned some pretty important people. Not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Be on your guard. Be alert. Basically, pay attention. Don't pay attention to the wrong things. Pay attention to the right things. You do not know when the time will come. It's like a man going away, leaves his house and puts his servant in charge. Listen, each with his assigned task. That's for us. What's your assigned task? And tells the one at the door, keep watch. Therefore, keep watch because you don't know when the owner of the house will come back. Whether in the evening, at midnight, when the rooster crows or at dawn. If he comes suddenly, do not let him find you sleeping. I love the bumper sticker that says, Jesus is coming back. Look busy. But that's what Jesus is saying here. He's saying, hey, hey, listen, I could come back anytime. Do what I've called you to do every moment. What I say to you, I say to everyone, watch. So I want to give you two practical things for your assignment. Number one, your first assignment according to Jesus and the two commands we're supposed to follow is to love God. So spend time in the Bible. Spend time in prayer. Make prayer not just a time you have in the morning, but an ever-existing conversation with God wherever you're at. When you find that you're struggling in an area, be honest with God about it. I can't tell you the number of times I say to God, you know, God, I, I, I don't like what that person's doing in that car when they cut me off. Can you help me to respond the right way to that person? God, I don't like what happened in my life. And I, every once in a while, you might forgive somebody and then suddenly you feel a wave of unforgiveness. Have that conversation with God. God, I choose to forgive them again. Would you help me to do that? God, I'm afraid of this thing. Would you help me to overcome fear with faith today? Just be honest with him. That's what prayer is. Just a conversation with God and allow the Holy Spirit in that to speak to you and to give you his peace. The second thing I would say about your assignment is it's others. 
It's your family. How can you love your family today? Now, that doesn't mean that you have to allow them to abuse you. I know we have people that have families that need boundaries. It's okay to have boundaries. But you can love somebody even when you have to say no to them. Your neighbors. God's put you where he put you for a reason. Look for those opportunities. This last week, I helped a neighbor look for his keys. He sent me a text later. He said, I just want you to know I watched your sermon this morning. I didn't even know he knew I was a pastor. I try not to tell people. You, once they find out you're a pastor, it's like you have the plague. I'm like, let me tell you what my wife does. They're like, what do you do? Peter Lord used to tell people he was a professional lover. I thought that was the weirdest thing to tell people. Your family's your neighbor. Your coworkers, have you looked for opportunities to share your faith with them, to invite them to church, to tell them what Jesus has done for you? When's the last time you shared your faith with someone else? When's the last time you said to somebody, God's working in my life? Are you afraid to say that? Look what God's doing in me. So, so love God and love others. And know that he loves you in the middle of that. Matthew 25, 23, Jesus tells the story of the stewards, the faithful stewards. And that's what he's referring to here, the same story. And he says, remember at the end, he says, well done, good and faithful servant. You took the little I gave you. And you were faithful with it. Today, I choose to be a faithful servant of Christ. You can't control what happens in the world. You can't control what somebody says. You can't control. Sometimes you can't even control what you hear or see. But you can control who you trust and who you're faithful to today. Today, I choose to be a faithful servant of Christ. Remember, the disciples couldn't figure out what matters. So Jesus said to them, watch, guard be ready and carry out your assignment. Are you ready for the return of Christ today? If you're here today and you're watching online, you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, I believe in a literal heaven and I believe in a literal hell. And the Bible says that when we give our lives to Jesus, John 3.16 says God loves us so much he did what? He sent Jesus to pay for that sin, that debt that we owe, that whoever believes in him, that word for trust, whoever trusts Jesus with their life, surrenders their life to him, will not perish but have eternal life. If you've never surrendered your life to him, you can do that today. That's what salvation is about. It's about surrender. God, I just surrender my life to you. I receive your forgiveness knowing that you died and rose again. I receive your spirit. When you do that, he changes you. But the truth is, if, and if you want to do that today, you can do that today. You can send me a note. You can talk to me after church. If you're here and you're a Christian, here's what I want you to know. We all get distracted. And so make a choice today. God, I choose to forgive. God, I choose to walk in your presence. God, I choose to walk in your love. God, I choose not to be distracted by all the things the world tells me are important. And I choose to carry out the assignment you've given me to love you and love others. Let's not forget that. In the middle of a world that's chaotic, I can tell you one thing about when Jesus is coming back. It's a day closer today than it was yesterday. So be ready. Let's pray. Father, thank you for these moments. Thank you for your word and your power. I pray, Father, if anyone's watching online or here this morning that doesn't know you, Lord, I want them to spend eternity in heaven. Lord, as a group that we could sit around the table in heaven talking about how you welcomed us home. And so, Father, I pray we would be a church that helps people find their way home to you for eternity. And Lord, for those of us who've gotten distracted with all the things the world tries to tell us are important, Lord, forgive us. Lord, forgive us for thinking somebody else can save us besides you. Help us turn to you first. And then carry out our assignment each day to do the things you've called us to do. Not only in our world, but in our nation, in our neighborhood, in our family. Lord, even in ourselves, confessing sin to you and making things right is the start. So, Father, we trust you today. Thank you for these moments. Lord, as we get to the end of the world, thank you that our peace and our hope is in you. In Jesus' name, amen.